Good evening and welcome to part two of our double shot bulletin. Uh, like I say, a lot going on right now, therefore I need to bring you this content as rapidly as possible and also just kind of got to make up for a couple of relatively unsuccessful videos, to be honest. Uh, the one I released about Skyrora, I, accept, uh, I expected rather that one to happen, but I also released one about how content creators take advantage of SpaceX fans and clickbait the hell out of them. And I was hoping that that might get a little bit more traction, and it hasn't. And I think that's most probably because the YouTube algorithm doesn't want to give any attention to a video that is going to detract from some of their most successful videos. And that is to say, the videos that spout a whole lot of nonsense in conjunction with uh, the name Elon Musk and rack up tons and tons of views. And guess what? That channel did the same damn thing and has racked up 10 times as many views as my video did in just a few hours. And the only way, by the way, to get YouTube out, the YouTube algorithm to go in a different direction, towards the direction of reality and facts, is to watch that video and then share it. Let's see if we can do that, guys. It's linked at the end of this bulletin, but let's move on with Orion and Artemis. Subscribe. So after providing us all with some of the most magnificent and unique views, not only of the moon, but also of our own planet, Orion is on its way back, and everything with the spacecraft, for the most part anyway, has been performing perfectly. It carried out another trajectory correction burn at 4.43 a.m. using the reaction control system thrusters. It lasted about 5.7 seconds, and it's on its way back. Also, flight controllers used Orion cameras to inspect the crew module thermal protection system and the European service module, which was the second of three planned external spacecraft inspections. Teams conducted this survey early in the mission to provide detailed images of the spacecraft's external surfaces after it had flown through the portion of Earth's orbit containing the majority of space debris, and teams reported no concerns after reviewing the imagery. Everything still going very well. But there is one unusual thing about this mission, which would really surprise just about anybody, including me. If there were astronauts on board Orion right now, they would be dead because there's no oxygen on Orion, nor is its life support system even being tested. Now, that makes no sense at all, at least on the surface of it. I mean, we need to make sure this thing is functioning properly. It's supposed to keep astronauts alive. How the hell can it do that if we don't even know if its life support system is functioning properly? Well, there is a big problem with trying to test a life support system when you don't have living beings on board. You don't have anything breathing the oxygen, therefore it's not producing any carbon dioxide, which means your carbon dioxide scrubbers don't have to be tested, etc, etc. Unless you have living beings on board Orion, trying to test the life support system would be a waste of time. Now in the past, NASA got around these problems by testing the life support system on animals. However, that approach seems to have fallen out of favor with animal rights activists, especially given the fact that Laika the dog, the first animal to ever really be tested on a spacecraft, died under horrible circumstances. So it's kind of understandable. However, it's not like they're testing anything. They are testing the nitrogen delivery systems on board Orion, which are very similar to the oxygen delivery systems. And by the way, this is on board the European Space Module, and Airbus is the one that's providing this particular piece of equipment. Quote, We carry nitrogen on board Ar Artemis 1, and will be testing the nitrogen delivery system during the flight that's ongoing at the moment. As the oxygen and nitrogen systems carry the same components, the test on the nitrogen distribution system will cover by similarity the oxygen delivery system. System. Furthermore, the oxygen system is being tested extensively on the ground. And by the way, that was Airbus spokesperson Ralph Heinrich. 
So Airbus and ESA are doing everything they can to test the system given the circumstances, but the real shakedown test for this life support system isn't going to happen until 2024 with the launch of Artemis 2. In addition to this, even though for the most part everything has been going very, very well, there have been 13 minor anomalies that have cropped up during the mission. One example of these is a set of erratic readings from Orion Star Trackers, which the capsule uses to navigate. This initially confused the team, but they eventually determined that the trackers were being dazzled by the glow from Orion's thrusters during burns. And when they identified that, they were able to work through the issue and correct it. Now, it's also worth noting that Airbus is making excellent progress with future European service modules for the future Artemis flights coming up. Like, Artemis 2 has already been delivered and is currently being tested. Artemis 3 is nearly complete and almost ready for delivery. The bones of the fourth service module have also been put together, and plans are in place to begin worth on, work rather on the fifth specimen later this month. So all in all, if everything goes well with the re-entry and splashdown, I think NASA can legitimately claim that this test has gone phenomenally well, and Orion deserves at least an A- grade, and possibly even better than that. Of course, there are other things that still need to happen before Artemis 2 can get going, and of course, Artemis 3 requires not only a good Orion capsule, not only a good European service module, an SLS rocket, it also requires a fully functioning starship. And that is a long hill to climb. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, guys, and also please check the description for various ways to support this content. And don't forget this video I have linked at the end of this one that deals with all of the clickbaiting that's going on with the YouTube community and SpaceX fans. And as always, stay angry about space.